This is the Hoka Mach 4 and the New Balance Rebel version 2. One of these has been one of my personal favorite daily trainers of 2021, and the other has been a crowd favorite. But what happens when we compare these two shoes head to head? It's time to lace up these favorites and take them for a run. Seven point eight one miles, eight minutes forty eight seconds per mile, one hundred and thirty seven beats per minute today. Going for a nice and easy run with a couple of strides thrown in with the New Balance Rebel version two, and going for the same run, same route, same type of run in the Hoka Mach Four, so that I can compare these two shoes head to head. Now, before I give you my thoughts on these two shoes, I do want to go over some disclosures. The New Balance Rebel version 2 is a pair of shoes that I bought and the Hoka Mach 4 is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Hoka for the purpose of review. However, regardless of how the shoes got to me, no one is paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in a video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Rebel 2 and the Mach 4. First, let's go over some specs. Let's talk about the Mach 4 first. This is a 29 millimeter stack height shoe with a five millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of Pro Fly midsole in this shoe. Now, Pro Fly isn't so much a foam as it is a foam system. There's two layers to it. There's a softer, a lighter layer up top that you're gonna feel when you land. And underneath that is a rubberized midsole foam. Now that midsole foam also takes the place of a outsole. So there's no rubber on this outsole at all. You're running completely directly on the midsole foam material. Up top, we have a very comfortable and roomy upper that's made out of heat press TPU yarns. The tongue is lightly padded and it's a mesh material that breathes relatively well. And that curls around to the back to a very padded heel cuff that provides a little bit of a bumper pad so the heel stays nice and tight in there. And the flare is a little bit exaggerated to give you a little bit of kind of like a pull tab as you're putting on this shoe. Around back, there is a little bit of structure. Not only does the foam kind of curl up around the sides of the foot to kind of give you some guide rails along each side of the ankle, but there's also a little bit of structure back here as well to give it some rigidity and stability. And there's also this swallowtail design in terms of the way that the foam is notched in the back here. So it's got coming back a little bit further from behind the heel and it's got that notch and that's supposed to aid in distributing some forces if you are landing further back towards the heel. Altogether, this comes at a relatively lightweight of 8.2 ounces and 232 grams. Now let's talk about the New Balance Rebel version two. In this shoe, we've got a 30 millimeter stack height, so very close to what we've seen in the Mach 4, but there's a six millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of fuel cell midsole foam here, a nice and springy, bouncy material. On the outsole, we have New Balance's Endurance rubber formulation, which is nice and grippy. And on the top, we have Mesh Upper, which is very flexible, but very strong. On the tongue, we have a thin piece of foam, which is perforated to give it some speed holes and breathability. And then that turns into another heel cup, similar to the Mach 4 that has a little bit of padding to keep everything comfortable, but also secure back there. And there's a notch in this Achilles flare. So that way it takes a little bit of pressure off of that Achilles. There's also what New Balance is calling a deconstructed heel. So what there is back here is not a lot of structure at all. It's very floppy, but I think what they're doing in order to keep things snug is using some of the padding in the heel, but also using the shape of the foam to give a little bit more of a place for the heel to sit while it's in the shoe. This shoe comes in and it's extremely lightweight, much lighter than the Mach 4, which is already a light shoe, 
but the New Balance Rebel version 2 comes in at 7.2 ounces and 204 grams. Now that we've got those specs out of the way, let's talk about what it's like to run in these shoes. And the way they're gonna break it down, I'm gonna talk about what it's like to use these shoes, what are the use case for each of them, and then we'll talk about the outsole, and then we'll talk about the uppers. Now, the first thing that I will say as kind of a preference to everything is that both of these shoes are fantastic. If you're looking at these shoes, wondering which one of these two should you get next, no matter which shoe you choose between these two, you're gonna end up with a very good shoe. So don't worry too much about which one is the best shoe because both of them are fantastic. Hoka says for the Mach 4 that it's a shoe for logging your long miles. And I definitely agree that that's what this shoe is fantastic for. I love the way that they've been working and tweaking that ProFly midsole system where that lighter top layer of foam is really comfortable and soft to land on but because it's sitting in, on top of that rubberized midsole layer, which is a little bit more firm, a little bit more springy, it makes it so that you're getting a very quick sensation. It doesn't feel like you're running on two different things. It's all working together really nicely. So I feel like I'm getting a lightweight experience that's very smooth, but also still very soft. I've definitely been enjoying running in this shoe for my longer miles, but the way I used it this particular week was the day after a very tough workout on the track. The following day, I put on the Mach 4 and I just went out for just some super easy miles, didn't care about the pace, didn't really even care about the heart rate, just wanted to go at whatever pace my body wanted just to keep the legs moving to help aid in recovery, get the blood flowing. And the Mach 4 felt great for that. I like it as much as I like max cushion shoes when I'm thinking about using the shoe as a recovery shoe. That being said, it's not just a slow long run shoe either. If you wanted to use it for a fartlek or if you had an easy run with some strides in there, I feel like the lightness of the foam and the responsiveness that you overall are getting from the soft top layer and the firmer bottom layer working together, make it for a very snappy ride as well. So you can still use it for those workouts as well. And so I feel like there's an incredible amount of versatility that the shoe has. So if you are looking for one shoe that can kind of do it all, I feel like the Mach 4 is a really good choice. That's not to say that the Rebel version 2 isn't a good choice. I feel like the shoe also has quite a bit of versatility, but the run experience from the midsole is very different. I would say that the fuel cell foam that's in here squishes quite a bit, but it also springs quite a bit. So it feels like a very bouncy foam and a lot of people are definitely enjoying that. I'm enjoying it as well. But there's part of me that feels like this shoe isn't quite as like thick or as cushioned as say the Mach 4 is. So I feel like that I like it not so much for my long runs, but I like it for my regular, like kind of everyday distance runs, my like regular runs, or things are gonna be a little bit faster. Because I feel very planted in the shoe, I feel very stable when I'm running in this shoe, even though it is a very squishy material. I feel like this is a shoe that I can take onto the track for faster workouts, especially because it's just so light. But I also feel like I could take it for a fartlek run or an easy run that had some strides in it. Anything where I need to pick up the pace, I feel like the Rebel 2 is a very good choice. The only thing for me is I just don't know if I would love it for very long runs because I just feel like I'm a little bit closer to the ground when I'm running in the shoe, even though like you know, millimeters wise, it's very close between the Mach 4 and the Rebel 2. I just feel like when I'm running in the Rebel 2, I just feel like it feels like a much lower stack height shoe than it actually is. Now let's talk about some of the outsoles. Now the big differences in the outsole is like one has a bunch of rubber on it, even though there is some exposed foam. One has a lot of rubber and the other has none. And you would think that because of that, like the New Balance Rebel version two would be like the clear winner in terms of outsole performance. And I would say, Yes, it is, but it's not because the Mach 4 doesn't have rubber. I feel like for a shoe that doesn't have rubber on the outsole, it has a surprising amount of grip. And when I run on it, it doesn't feel like I'm running on a shoe that doesn't have a rubber outsole, at least in terms of traction. It just feels like a regular running shoe as far as grip is concerned. The only area where I feel like the, the Rebel 2 has like a clear advantage is when things get very, very wet. So along the lakefront now, we're now at the end of summer. The water that's been washing onto the shore has been baked by the sun all summer long. And there's like a thin film of like, I'll call it lake sludge that's on a lot of the concrete that's out there. 
The Rebel 2 managed to get through it without a single problem at all. The Mach 4, there are certain times where when I'm about to get into the water, I'm not sure if that first step in the water is going to be a little bit squirrely or if it's gonna be just fine. So like when it's really super, super slick and that lake sludge is very slick, uh, that's where I feel like the New Balance Rebel 2 has an advantage because it just has that like super grippy rubber compound on the outsole. But for the most part, when I'm running on the road surfaces that I typically run on, asphalt, concrete, I feel like both of these shoes do absolutely fine. Even in rainy conditions, it's hard for me to really tell the difference. It's only in some of the extremes when I can really notice the difference between the two. Now, as far as the upper goes, I think that you're getting two very different upper experiences that I think kind of match the overall temperaments of the shoe. With the heat press TPU yarns of the Mach 4, I think that what that material does is it gives like an overall kind of like shape to the shoe and especially in the toe box area where I feel like it's comfortable in that shoe because I feel like the shoe's almost like not touching you. It's almost like kind of enveloping around you. It's on you without being like, on you, if that makes any sense. So they, I feel like there's just a lot more space and room in the shoe, and that's how it's reaching a level of comfort. Now, uh, the Rebel 2, I feel like it's reaching its comfort by being very snug on the foot and kind of giving you almost like a knit type of sensation, almost like a sock-like feeling to the upper where it kind of like sticks really closely onto your foot. And it's comfortable because it's like just like a second sock that's on top of the foot. And it doesn't feel like it's binding or constricting in any way. Instead, it just feels like it's a part of your foot. And so both of these uppers are very comfortable, but they're approaching it in some very different ways. I will say, as far as the heel cups are concerned, uh, I think that a lot which heel cup you like better is going to depend largely in part on what type of kind of like armor and stuff that you want in the back of the shoe. And so the Mach 4 has a little bit of plastic back there that's covered in some of this foam, whereas the New Balance Rebel 2 is super floppy. And I tend to really like floppy heels. And the way that they've made this deconstructed heel, I'm not sure what makes it deconstructed, but whatever they're doing, I think it really works because it just feels like it wraps around my foot and stays there. I don't feel like I've got any sliding around or anything like that. It just works and it's doing it without any plastic or anything else that's going to add weight to the shoe. So I prefer kind of the snugness in the heel of that Rebel 2. So with all that being said, which do I think is the better daily trainer? It's tough because I do think that like kind of the use cases diverge outside of like easy run in terms of which shoe is better at which. So for the shorter, faster stuff, I think the Rebel 2 is better. For the longer, easy stuff, I think the Mach 4 is better. But overall, I think I'm gonna have to give it to the Mach 4 as my favorite for daily trainer out of these two shoes, even though they're both fantastic because I feel like I can still do even a track workout in the Mach 4. It might not be the first shoe that I reach for, but it's something that I certainly can do. But I can also do very, very long runs in the shoe, whether I'm going at an easy pace or whether I'm picking up the pace. And because of that versatility, plus all that lightweight comfort that the shoe can still provide, I feel like the Mach 4 is my favorite and the winner in this daily trainer battle. If you have any questions about either of these two shoes, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?